Hello everyone, my name is KK, and today we are making a series of switches that have to be pressed in the correct order in order to get through the doors. However, if you fail, the switches will reset and you'll have to take on 10 mants. The first thing you want to do is create your room. You can skip this part by building underground in one of the caves that have been provided. But for this one, I want to have a bit of a abandoned dungeon feel to it by having just the shallow layer of water just above the bottom layer floor. It makes it feel like this room has been abandoned and the water is just kind of flowed in over time. So for my room, I went with this drop in battle arena kind of feel. So when you drop in, you can't get out. And for the next step, you want to figure out how many switches you need. And you do want to do switches for this. You can do buttons, but you have to also use a switch gizmo with it. So it's just easier to use a switch or the lever switch or the pull switch. And for this one, I think I'm going to go with eight, just four on each side of the door here. And these switches do have an indicator of when they are switched on or off with the light right above it. I don't feel like that's enough and I kind of want to spruce it up a little bit. So I am going to add a light above each switch just like this here. And now this is just going to give us a little more visibility on which switches have been turned on and which ones are still off. And we're just going to go ahead and link up every single switch to the lights directly above it. And that's the last one. And for the switch behaviors or the link behaviors, uh, we're going to leave it at default where the switch is on, the light turns on. And when the switch is off, the light turns off. Now it's important to go ahead and figure out which order you want these switches to be activated in. For this, I'm just going to keep it simple and go from the left side of the door all the way down and then from the right side of the door all the way down. So this one's going to be my first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight. And with the order in mind, we're going to go ahead and pull out our first switch gate and we're going to set it in front of the second switch. This is just to keep them in order. We're going to hop into the settings and we're going to actually change this to not all. Then we want to link our switch, our second switch to it and our first switch to it. You're going to hop into the link of the first switch. We want to turn off all behaviors. And this is going to gray out this link here. And this just means there are no behaviors, which means there are no actions whenever the switch is turned on or off. However, it is still evaluated as part of the equation when the switch gate is figuring out what to do. And for the second one, we want it to be switched on to evaluate and switched off to have no behavior. So all this does is when this switch is turned on, it tells this gate to evaluate how many links are connected to it. But when it's switched off, it does not do anything. Then we want to grab ourselves a timer and we're just going to place this directly in the middle. And then we are going to link our switch gate to the timer and the timer back to the switches. We're actually going to go ahead and link it up to every single switch. And I'm going to pull this timer back a bit uh, just to make these links a little more visible. Hopping into the settings of the timer, we want to drop this down all the way. We want it to turn off, start on play, and then we'll leave the other settings as is. I'm also going to take this switch gate and turn off this snap to ground. And I want to bring it up a little bit more. And again, that's just for visibility of the links. So now we want to hop into the link from the switch gate to the timer. And on conditions passed, we want to start timer. On conditions failed, we want no behavior. And for the links of all the switches, we want it to deactivate. So what this system does here is when this switch is turned on, it is going to do nothing within the switch gate, but it is going to activate this light directly above it. And then when this switch is turned on directly following, it is going to send a signal to evaluate in the switch gate. It is going to ask the question, is there one missing? And if the answer is no in the situation, we did both of these, nothing is going to happen. However, if I go directly to this one and flip it on, it is going to send that same signal to evaluate. And it is going to ask the question again, is one missing? The answer is going to come up yes. And we have it set to in this link to where if the conditions are passed, it is going to start this timer. Then when this timer starts, you have one second. After that one second ends, it is going to switch off every single switch. And we're actually going to go ahead and see this in motion. We flip these two on, nothing happens. Turn those off real quick. Then we just flip this one on. 
it turns itself off. So I set up this little side switch to do a little demonstration for the reason we have the timer in here. And I put the light way up there because I didn't want it to look like the arrow was pointing back at the light. It is actually pointing back at the switch. But how we have this set up is this is just set to evaluate when it's turned on or off. And then it's set to deactivate on conditions passed or failed. And so this is pretty much sending a signal to evaluate and then immediately sending a signal back to the switch. So if we hop into play mode, we give this a test. Nothing happens. The signals are so instantaneous that it can't read it right. And then there's no behavior. So we have to unfortunately have the timer set into place to where it has time to read these signals and send them back to the switches that activated the signals. And the slowest we can do this is at one second. I do wish we can drop it down to at least half a second because with this system, there are ways to break these puzzles if you are quick enough to activate switches. So now back to the actual build itself, we are just gonna copy one of these and we want to place this one in front of the third switch. Again, just to keep it organized. And then you want to delete the link between the first switch. And then we are gonna add a link between the third switch. Hopping into the link between the second switch and the second switch gate. We want no behaviors again on this one. Then for the link on the third switch, we want it to just be evaluated when it's switched on and nothing when it's switched off. And this is again, the same thing as the first one. It's just gonna read if the switch before it has been activated. If not, it is gonna send a signal to the timer to turn all of them back off. Then we want to repeat this again. We're just gonna copy this down to be in front of the fourth switch. Deactivate that link there. Add a new link to the fourth switch. Hop into the third switch. Turn off all behaviors. Hop into the fourth switch and just turn off behaviors for switched off. And now we just wanna copy this for all four of these last switches. We just always wanna make sure that it is connected to the switch before it and that it has no behaviors. Then putting this link here and behaviors for switched off, turned off. So now that all of our switch gates are set into place, the reason we have all of these switches with the behaviors turned off for when they are switched off is because every time this timer receives a signal, it is telling these switches to turn off. So if these are telling these to evaluate every time they're turned off. It is just gonna be a constant loop of turning the switches off and the puzzle will never be completed. So for this last switch, we are actually going to flip it. We no longer want it to be not all, we want it to be all. Then we're gonna switch the behaviors in here for when conditions are passed, we want no behaviors. And when they fail, we want to start the timer. Everything else there will remain the same. And then we are going to link the last one up to our doors. In this case, I've got two. You definitely don't need two. You can do it with just one. And the reason we wanted to switch that one is to make this one a little easier to understand. So for our conditions pass, saying that that switch gate has met all conditions, that all switches have been turned on that are linked to it, we want the door to unlock and then open. And then I always like to lock them back so they can't be closed again by the player. And then I gotta do the same thing for this one, which is to unlock, open, then lock and then on conditions failed we don't need any behaviors and i am going to go ahead and lock both of these doors so they cannot be opened by the player so as of right now this puzzle does work you hit the wrong switch and it's going to turn it off you start the right switches and you hit the wrong one they are going to flip off and then if you do it in order your doors are going to open the lights are going to remain on and you are clear to move in to claim your glory and whatever else is in there However, there is one issue to where if I reset here, and if we just hop into these last two switches, we can go boop, boop. As long as we beat the timer, the doors are gonna open. So now, the main reason we wanted to set this to be all is because we are going to link every single switch to the last one, and we want to turn off all behaviors. We want none of these switches to evaluate the last switch gate in any way. So let's go ahead and link up all of these. You can see it's getting really hard to follow. That's why I like to keep things a little spread out. So they are connected and just to make sure, cause this is getting a little messy, I'm gonna move this one out to the center. Let's turn the snapping back on. That way it's a little easier to see what we're all connected to and they are all grayed out. So, whoops, actually deleted something. So now this stops your players from being able to just activate the door by going through the last two switches. They do have to go through the entire process of turning on every single switch. 
So this is great and all, but right now, if the player fails to get the switches in the correct order, there are no repercussions. Nah, I don't like that. So we're actually gonna hop in here and we're gonna grab a creature spawner. And I just don't think those soldier ants are enough. So we're gonna hop into these settings and we are going to select, let's do the mants. Let's do 10 mants. Then we're gonna link this up to the timer and we are gonna have it spawn creatures on time elapsed. And what's really great about this is if the player keeps trying to do the switches and failing, it's not just gonna keep spawning in 10 mants every time they fail. I do believe they have to be cleared out entirely to spawn again. So they'll never have more than 10 mants in this room at one time. But let's give it a test. Let's see how we're working here. We got the first half of the puzzle correct and oopsie. And we have a tower of mants. I did not know they would spawn in like that. That's fun. So that is that you can, of course, link up lights and sounds and everything for whenever the player does achieve it or if they fail it. Of course, you don't have to have a challenge quite as hard as if they do fail it. However, there is one issue with this. If you want one player to play through the world, just linearly not returning to the room, this works fantastically. However, if you are wanting multiple people to be able to play on the same map, on the same shared world, and experience the puzzles just the same as the first person did, uh, we are not done here. And there are a few more things we would need to add to this because there are no ways to reset this at the moment. And for this, I already have a little room created here. This is the same setup with all of the switch gates and switches being the same, linked to the timer, linked to the door. However, we have a volume in here. And this volume is very simple. All it says is once this player enters into the room, it is going to lock the door behind them. And once they leave the room, it is going to unlock the door and open it. This volume is also linked to the timer. And all it says is when the overlap ends, when the player leaves the volume, it is just gonna start the timer to reset all the switches. And the volume is also connected to our exit door. And it pretty much says when overlap ends, we are going to close and lock the door again. So this is what this looks like in play mode. We walk in, the door closes behind us. We do the switch sequence. Let's see if I can remember this correctly. Perfect. Door opens as it should. Once you leave, that door closes. The door you came in through, if you can see through there, has opened. And the next player can run through and experience it. It is just a quick and easy way to reset the puzzle for if you're wanting more people to be able to experience this on a shared world. And that is going to be it for this build, or these builds rather. Two different ways for the same functioning series of switches. If you have enjoyed this video, please like it. That really helps me out. And if you have learned anything from this video, uh, please consider subscribing. That also helps me out. If you have any questions or any ways you could use this or make this better, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. You can also follow me on Twitter at DJKK. I am trying to become a little more present on social media. Twitter is just a great place to start. Thank you for watching and thank you so much for your support. Until next time, I'll see you.